Biblical hope is not based on your effort or desires. It is something received. Now we're going to look for fixes, the way to get through this, the trials. Okay? God gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge. There it is. I can't, I couldn't say it any better. Well, good morning. What a happy bunch. I see a few smiles out there. What does the Bible say about hope? Hope. About three weeks ago, on the Sunday paper here, uh, the headlines show, I'll just put this up there for a second, the sense of hopelessness and What happened, let me show that to you and read part of this paper first. It says they have nowhere to go. It is talking about homeless people, poor, people who have nothing. They live out on the streets. They have nowhere to go. They're literally asking, where can I go? Any stability that anybody can have when they're experiencing homelessness, it's the only thing that they know. They've lived so long on the street, that's all they know. It's sad. So I was working on this topic, but after a week or so, this came in the morning newspaper. So I ask you, what does it say? What does the Bible say? And we can get some good instructions about this. Hope. Now there's a park down on Ute Avenue. It's down by the, um, it runs north and south, the avenue does. It's down by the railroad station. Ute goes to Utah. If you get on that, you're headed toward Utah. And then the other way, the other one-way street is Pitkin. And that goes to Palisade. And also, um, there's 4th and 5th. And so, there's a big park there. And those of you who live here, you understand. That park was a homeless, where they would go and beg for food and stand out on the Either Ute or Pipkin, and, and I give them stuff. But it's, it, it's not a fix. So a few weeks ago, the city told the police department, close it down. And they did. They put a big fence around. And there's bathrooms, nice brick buildings. And they closed it, locked it, put a fence up, double locked it. So that's done. Why would they do that? Now the homeless have nothing. They're walking the street, and I've seen that here just a few days ago. And the reason is crime. Um, The things people do and generate that are homeless, they got nothing. Bathroom, they just go to the bathroom on the ground. Uh, Trash, they throw trash. Drugs, it's a druggy place. You know, that's standard, isn't it? Sure it is. Now, Denver has a problem. And it's getting so big with all these people coming in from Mexico and South America that uh, they have these giant homeless encampments. And I watch the Denver news. I try to every morning. But they bring in buses and dumpsters and a team of people, and the cops load the the homeless in the 
and the buses. And then the dumpsters, they fill up with all their belongings, stuff they can't carry, and the tents and the pallets and the whatever. And they get bus to shelters and uh, old hotels, and they're put up there. And gar- gro- uh, grocery carts and backpacks and stuff are all scattered all over. It's a mess. So today, let's look at hope or experience. Experience is a good thing. And on Bible verses... I'm going to try and focus on the Word of God. And some topics we can explore because you and I are living in the trials. I I like to say this because I have company. Old age. (laughs) Many are you here. Now Mark and Ginger, that's the exception. They're young and, and Bobby and his wife. So, but life's experiences. But I want to stick to the Bible. A hope. The word hope is found 121 times. And it is 90, uh, 68 in the Old Testament and 53 it's found in the New. So that's a good balance. I read that and thought, ah, that's a good balance. And... Uh, I think I'm still right. So let's take a look at hope together. I'll kind of go slow today, and uh, we can, we'll, we'll try and read these strip scriptures together. And when life seems to be overwhelming, right now, it's, for me, it's overwhelming. I was, had nice lunch yesterday, we walked out to the car, and we're close to the golf course, and these, there's a foursome guys, young guys. They made a great shot, and they all started screaming, good one, good one, yay. I thought, well, I wished I could do that. Can't do it anymore. And it gripes me. Hmm, sorry, but it does. A lot of things I'm finding... I cannot do. And it just doesn't set well. So, but that's okay. I'm up here, and I'm upright. So here we are. Let's go to Psalms 9 and 17. Let's start here. Psalms 9 and 17. And it starts. The wicked shall be turned into hell. But it should see, say, the, the grave or the pit. The wicked shall be turned into the pit. And all nations that forget God. So all this is going to change someday. For the needy, and these homeless people are needy, and sometimes we're needy, for the needy shall not always be forgotten. Thank you, God. For expectations of the poor shall not perish forever. So the hope that the poor people have, someday, someday they're going to get it. It says right here. Psalms 9, 19. Arise, O Lord, and let man prevail. And let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in your sight. In 20, put them in fear, O Lord, Lord, that the nations may know them themselves to be but men. We're just men. We're just people. And when they round up the homeless or they tax you more or anything, it's just men. And we have to bear it. Now, let's go to Romans 15 and 4. Romans 15 and 4. Now, I wrote key, made a big arrow, underline this scripture. Romans 15, 4. 
For whatsoever things are written afore after were written, and he's talking about, Paul is talking about the Old Testament. For our learning, we are to learn what he's talking about with the Old Testament. And we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You want to have hope? There it is. Through patience. You've got to have patience, and you've got to read the scripture. See? You want, you want to, I'll say, the monkey off your back, worrying about everything. Well, read about in the scripture. And I have some pretty good ones coming up. In other words, what Mark says about me, and he's right, I I say this quite often, get your nose in the Bible. Stick your nose in there. Read it. Understand it. Romans 12.12. Romans 12.12. Romans 12.12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. And old people... Have tribulation. You can't get away from it. It's here. It's upon us. And you young people, it's coming. Be constant in prayer. So thank God daily. Talk to God. Now, unlike worldly hope, and I wrote part of this thought, unlike worldly hope, biblical hope, is not based on your effort or desires. It is something received. So we have to have, pray for hope, and God gives it. I'm going to show it to you. And God of hope pours hope into you through the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And that's why we're here. You understand. In Romans 15.13 Romans 15.13 Now the God of hope Wow, new name Now the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit There it is I read it to you Get it? Mark it? Put it down. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you gain hope and understanding, and you can advance on your walk. Now, one thing that bugged me, really, for a while, was a few months ago, we had, or maybe a year or so ago, we had people coming in, nice people, and they would be baptized and then all of a sudden, they just leave. And it really bothered me. I asked our church, please pray for it. For I, I didn't un- understand it. Well, I do more now. It's hard to be a Christian. It was hard, and I know it, for all of you to make it here and to stick with us. Stick with it. Stick with Bible study. Stick with prayer. Doing good. It's a hard walk. If it were, was easy, everybody would be doing it. See? But you may abound through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's see what that's talking about. Let's go to the book of Lamentations. Now, I did a sermon on Lamentations. And it's um, Jeremiah... Lamenting of the fact that Jerusalem fell. And they, in Jerusalem, they took captives, most of the people, but they left a few there because they weren't, they couldn't work. They were elderly, different problems. So here's Jeremiah. So he writes down, down his thoughts after this happened. Lamentations 3 and 17. Lamentations 3 and 17. 
and thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. He says, I forgot it. He's praying to God. I don't understand. I was doing okay. I had clothes. I had warmth. I had a place to go. And now he says, I forgot. It's, it's so hard. Now, when, when he wrote this, and I read it, I think of these homeless. And I don't want anyone to have that, to go through that. But people here have, they have themselves or their children or relatives have hard times. And I know. And it bothered me when it happens. Lamentations 3 and 8. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord, remembering mine affliction and my misery of the wormwood and the gall. My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbling me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. He said, I have hope in the miserable spot he's in. And remember Job? Job was a, he ended up lost at all, almost overnight. His kids, his family, his assets, his home. And he <laughs> ended up with nothing. See, that's how quickly it can go. Lamentations 3.22 It is our Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. And that's pretty neat of Jeremiah to write that. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And that's one of the songs we sing. Great is thy faithfulness. We got to stick to it, folks. You, You have to... Get your nose in the Bible without fail. And understand. The Lord is my potion, portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeks him. You've got to seek it. And the Lord will be good to you. See how that works. And I love this last one. Lamentations 3.26. It is good that man should both hope and quietly, underline that, quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Pretty cool. He said it is both hope and quietly waiting. Don't mean demanding. Be patient. Now, I'm going to switch direction a little bit because we're going to look at fixes. I've talked and told you what hope is and how you get it, and I've shown you that through Scripture. Now we're going to look for fixes, the way to get through this, the trials. Okay? When you need knowledge, read God's Word. And it's like this. We talk to God. We pray. Okay, God, thank you. It's a nice day. I'm here. Blah, blah, blah. Okay? But how does he answer you? Right here. Get it? Read the Bible. Understand the Bible. Figure it out. I have a bunch of reference books, and I plow through it, and I call up my friends here. I've called mainly Les and Charles Miller and another friend um, and ask them, I don't get this. What, what, What are we doing here? And they help me. But there's helps all over. Yeah, You talk to God, God talks to you. Simple. So let's look at this. When you need to know. Let's start in Psalms. And I'm sorry I didn't uh, group this, but I didn't. I meant to, but yeah, 
run out of time. Psalms 32 and 7. Psalms 32 and 7. Now, we're looking for understanding and hope it goes beyond godly hope. 32 and 7, Psalms. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shall, you shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me about with psalms of deliverance, Shelah. I will instruct you, this is God talking, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go. I will guide you with my eye. I will guide you. Sometimes things work out, and they work out really well, and sometimes they don't. Well, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and get going again. Don't leave me. Don't leave the church. Don't leave your friends. Don't leave God. It's ridiculous. Psalms 119, 130. These are really interesting scriptures. Psalm 119, 130. The opening of thy words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. Well, it just makes you wise. You're looking for wisdom. You're looking for the ability to move ahead. Even if you're old, you want to move ahead, don't you? You want to succeed in whatever you're doing? Well, the words of the Bible. Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes 2 and 26. Ecclesiastes 2 and 26. For God gives to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy. See, it comes out of that. You want joy in your life? Uh, Not worry about playing a game of golf? Things like that pop in my head. Uh, I wished I could do that again. I'd like to go back and surf in the ocean. I doubt if I will ever get to do that. You know? It's a different life for me. Yesterday, our grandchildren came over, and the pleasure is watching them fly these model planes, and they zoom, zoom, and my pleasure was going out, sitting down, having a cup of coffee, and watching them. Hey, sometimes you have to settle for less than you want. And wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner, he gives travail. See, I could sit inside and mope. You can't do that. Got to get off your backside and do things. Read a book. Together and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. You want to do things? Write a letter. Email. Less than uh, rich, they're email people. I can't, I can't believe them. They, they, they take care of all that over in Africa. I can't even remember their names and stuff like that. They do that. They're good at it. Isaiah 42 and 16. So people have different talents. Isaiah 42 and 16. And I will bring the blind by the way that they know not. I will lead them in paths. God speaking. He'll lead you. You don't get it? He'll lead you. Do you figure it out? They that have not known, I will make darkness light before them. See, these people left the church too soon. soon. They became offended over something. Sad. You'd have to stick it out. 
Bible tells you that, remember? The hand of the plow. And it says this, uh, 42.16, Isaiah, And the crooked things straight, these things will I do unto them, and not forsake them. God's not going to give up. So it's best if you stick with it, or you're going to go through a lot of pain. Luke, there again, I went from Isaiah, the Old Testament, to the New. Luke 21, 15. Luke 21, 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. Wow. So, we have new people getting up here and opening and closing a prayer, reading things. Good. Good. I, I love it. If you stumble like I do, so what? Well, get on with it. If you have a chance to participate, do. If you feel like it. Then spake, spoke Jesus, or excuse me, John eight twelve. John eight twelve. John 8, 12. Then spoke Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. See, it's Christ, the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Keep your nose in the Bible. Participate. We're going to have a great luncheon together. Participate. I hope you guys talk till you get hoarse. And visit. It's nice. It says, He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John eight thirty two. Just down there page of what? John eight thirty two. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. There I'm just what I'm trying to pound home. You will know the truth. You'll be able to sort through these things. Not what you hear on TV. Now let's go to John 16. John 16, 13. Well, I can't separate the pages. Come on, boy. John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you in truth, the Holy Spirit. He will guide you. Christ is saying this. And he never lied. He walked a straight path. For he shall speak of himself, but whosoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he shall you things to come. Let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 16, 3. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your works unto the Lord, and your thoughts shall be established. You'll, you'll gain ground. You'll build your foundation on rocks. Rock. Not on straw. Ephesians 1 and 8. Therefore, he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Talking about, Paul's talking about Christ. Let's go to the back of the Bible. Let's go to James 1 and 5. Am I going too fast? I hear, no, no. Others say, yeah, you're going too fast. James 1 and 5. I'll I'll slow it down. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and gives to all men liberally, and upbraided not. In other words, God will not defame you, rail you, or make fun of you, or just use your head. Ask God. If you're going to make a decision, like what? Buy a car. We just did that. And uh, a lot of thought. 
a lot of trying out cars. I bet I went in and I drove 10 cars. I sat in more than that. And it finally made a decision. But God helps. He helps in every way. Well, let's go back to the Old Testament. Um, Proverbs 2. Proverbs 2 and 2. Uh-oh. Proverbs 2 and 2 and 3. So that, you, so that thou incline your ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. If you cry after knowledge and lift up the voice for understanding, you have to work at it. You have to work. It, does, it doesn't come simply. Up here, what I'm doing, I, it's the last thing I wanted to do ever uh, 20 years ago. Proverbs 4, or 2 and 4. Let's see how I've done. Proverbs 2 and 4. If you seek as her, seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure, you know, if you knew where some gold coins were buried, you'd be out there. I would get my young grandson and dig it up. So you have to work at it hard. Then shall you understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives, God gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge. There it is. I can't, I couldn't say it any better. I, I, or if I studied for a long time. Knowledge and understanding, God gives. You have to ask for it. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteousness. Righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk upright. And being a Christian is sometimes hard. I wrote that down here in red letters. It's sometimes tough. Psalms 111.10. Uh, let's go, let's say a Proverbs. One more Proverbs. Okay. 28.5. Proverbs 28.5. Evil men understand non judgmental judgment. But they that seek the Lord understands all things. If you seek God, you're going to understand a lot. Dealing with people is a big one. Negotiations are a big deal anymore. We're a litigious society. It's, I spend a lot of money on, on lawyers. Well, you have to. Go to Psalms. I don't think we did this. Psalms 111.10. I'll read it to you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding have all that do his commandments. And boy, you guys are right on. You're here today. Keep his commandments. His praise endures forever. And what did Christ say? He said, uh, if you love me, keep, keep my commandments, didn't he? Yep. I got a nod or two. If you, if you love Christ, you love God, keep his commandments. Don't break them. Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. Now I'm giving you these scriptures that can, you can think about, you can rely upon. It's like a fix-it. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. It's free. And you can argue, but how many... I started out as a young 
child, my parents would drop me off at a Sunday school. I think they did that just to get me out of the house because I was uh, not the best boy. But uh, they got they dropped me off. I remember uh, Mormon Sunday school and uh, Baptist Sunday school. And but you have to. It's free here. If you don't want to make an offering, don't. I, we don't care. People send us stuff, money. I can't believe it. It's not my job anymore, but I used to keep track of that. and uh, It's amazing how generous God's people are. We had a man come up here to start our church, and he, he, he liked us so much he gave us big checks for a long time, and it helped. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30. So we go back up. But to him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Boy, that Paul can write. Let me read that again. Who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. He's redeemed us. Bam, back. We're his. If you understand me up here, you got it. You just have to act upon it. And don't give up. Don't give up. Now let me read this one. Uh, Psalms 9 and 10. And they that know your name will put their trust in you. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them and and that seek you. We have to seek God in his laws. Got to work it out every day. Proverbs one twenty three. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. So let's continue in Proverbs. Proverbs 4.18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto, a, unto the perfect day. So we have to keep after it. Now, last one. Then I have a conclusion. <laughs> Psalms twenty-five, twelve. What man is he that fears the Lord? Him, or he, or she... He or she shall he or she teach in the ways that he has chosen. God has a plan. Get it? God has a plan, and you're part of it. Just stick with it. Stick with it. Now, what have we done today? What have we gone through? Well, first we talked about, let me get my notes here. We talked about hope and how so many people don't have hope. You have hope. After today, if you don't have hope, I have failed. So, when life seems to be overcoming, there are fixes. Get your nose in the Bible. I read you 22. 22 things about God, about Christ, about the apostles. Paul can really write. Write. And that's what it's about. Now, indeed, that's what we've done today. Let's go back, and I'm going to wait for this one. Romans 15.4. I'll just read it to you. You, we read it once, Romans 15 and 4. Paul's writing to the Roman church. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. See, 
you read that, and he's talking about what we call the Old Testament. See? What was written before, he had these scriptures. He could, the rolls. And if you go to a Jewish synagogue, they have, you know, the, the whole thing there. Big ones. And we, here's what he says, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Okay. I want to make a point. Here. Uh, see that? Old Testament. See how thick it is? New Testament. See that? He didn't know. He didn't have a clue that we would be here in this wonderful room going through what he wrote. So now it's up to you. I hope I've clarified that and put some curiosity in your soul, in your head, so you can just continue the function of being a Christian. And many of you have done this for years. And you, you, I appreciate you very much. And thank you for coming and being here. You have received this information based upon the Word of God. Every additional topic concerning the truth, which originates in Scripture, builds understanding leading to salvation. We hope you will personally review the Scriptures cited in this presentation. God will teach you if you ask Him. Until next time, good day. Good day.